Hello everybody, I hope you're well and I hope you've had a good start to 2018. I started off my reading year pretty well, I think. I read four books this month and three of those I enjoyed, one of them not so much, but I'll get to that in a second. Two of the books I read this month were also from Australian writers and I'm hoping to read a lot more Australian writers this year. The first book I read in January was Extinctions by Josephine Wilson. This is about an elderly man called Fred. He lives in a retirement home in Perth. His wife has passed away and his daughter is living in London and he mostly keeps to himself, but an encounter with a neighbour called Jan starts bringing up some old memories. Slowly throughout the book we find out more about Fred's life and his family and about tragic occurrences that have happened in his life. Even though this book doesn't state at the beginning that it's set in Perth, I knew instantly that the author was describing my city. It was really cool to see Perth reflected so accurately in a novel and to hear the author express opinions about the city that I have. For example, she talks about how horrible all the new houses that get built are and how sad it is that all the nice old houses keep getting knocked down. I liked how you slowly find out that the main character has not always been the nicest person. It was a really interesting way of talking about a character who in another book would just be an older prejudiced character very set in their ways and it was really interesting that the author decided to take him and use him as the main character and really delve into the reasons why he is behaving in ways that in a lot of cases we would think as really awful. There are a lot of issues packed into this one story. It talks about toxic masculinity, racism in Australia, abusive fathers, the stolen generation and disability as well. And although I think it tackled the topics really well and had a lot of interesting points to make about each one, it did feel very crammed in. The one thing that drew me out of the story was a lot of tragic things happen to all of the characters in the book. A lot of people have children that die. Perhaps that's just my very sheltered experience but it felt a little bit like there was a lot of tragedy in there for tragedy's sake to make a point and to make the characters the way they are rather than it feeling like a natural part of the story. Definitely a major factor of me enjoying this book was that it was set in Perth. I feel like if it was set in another country or even maybe another city I might not have been as engaged. The second book I read in January was The Power by Naomi Alderman. This book starts off with teenage girls suddenly discovering that they have the power of electricity and are able to shoot basically lightning bolts out of their hands and slowly this power grows to all women which turns society upside down and throughout the story of the book we slowly see the patriarchy turn into a matriarchy. At first I was really interested in the concept of the book and I kept forgetting that I myself don't have lightning powers coming out of my hands. I almost was convinced that this was a real thing that I could do. The concept of the book seemed to be that if women suddenly had power over men and society turned from a patriarchy to a matriarchy that nothing would actually change saying that men and women are not inherently different so it is purely our society that creates the changes between genders as opposed to any kind of physical differences. And so when women have physical power over men, they are just as abusive and cruel and controlling as men can be. And I think this concept is probably a true one, but I felt like in the book it happened too fast. So the span of time from women getting the power to absolute chaos was only a few decades. And I feel like the socializing that women get currently is so powerful that I didn't quite believe that all of women would suddenly start acting exactly like men do currently. I think this wasn't helped by the fact that I found it difficult to really get into the story. The book is told from several characters' points of views and a lot of these characterizations I felt were quite stereotypical, especially the character of Roxy, the sort of London mobster. She felt more like a archetype as opposed to an actual person. Ironically, the one male character that gets a point of view, Tun Tunde, Tunde, I'm not sure how to say his name, I felt like he was the most realistic and interesting character. Switching between these several characters made the story drag for me and I found there wasn't a strong enough central plot to keep the story moving forward. It felt more like a collection of scenes. Yeah, so sadly I didn't enjoy that one as much as I thought I would. The next book I read in January was appropriately named Australia Day by Melanie Cheng. For anyone living overseas, Australia Day is our national public holiday where supposedly we are meant to celebrate what it means to be Australia. There is a lot of debate around the holiday as it's currently celebrated on the 26th of January which was the day that the first fleet landed in Sydney. So effectively 
the day commemorates the day that white people came to Australia and entirely ruined the lives of Aboriginal people living here. There is a huge push to change the date so that we can celebrate the day as the inclusive day that it should be. Unfortunately our politicians are not particularly interested in this but hopefully this is something that will happen in the future. So I felt instead of celebrating Australia Day it was more appropriate to read this collection of short stories. Each story in the book is a snapshot of the life of an Australian ranging from all different backgrounds and ages. There is no particular plot to any of the stories they are truly just snapshots. It was less like reading a book and more like viewing a series of photographs of ordinary Australian people. So it looks at everything from Centrelink to racist tourists climbing Uluru to immigrants living in Australia who can't speak English. It really felt like a true representation of Australia and I think it's well worth reading for anyone who is interested in what Australia is actually like as opposed to the stereotypes that generally get portrayed to to other countries. This is also the first collection of short stories for adults that I've ever finished so I feel like I've achieved a reading milestone there. The fourth book I read in January was Flowers for Algernon by Daniel Keyes. This is a story about Charlie. He is an intellectually disabled man living in New York and he agrees to undergo an operation that is meant to make him smart and intelligent as he puts it. He's the first human to have the experiment done on him. It's previously been successfully done on a mouse called Algernon. At first the operation is a success. The book is written as a series of progress reports which Charlie writes and the author really cleverly shows Charlie's progression in terms of his intellectualism by the way that Charlie writes and his level of spelling. It deals with topics of humanity and agency and looks at the way that society treats people who we see as lacking in intelligence and we treat them as less than human. It's a really really sad book but I think it's really well worth reading as a classic and it feels really progressive for a book written in the 60s aside from one female character who inexplicably wants to have sex with Charlie without any real explanation given aside from she's a woman and he's a man. But ignoring that bit of the book. The rest of it is really fascinating. Those are all the books I read in January. Please let me know if you read any of them and your thoughts on them. I hope you're having a great day and I'll see you soon. Bye!